Two. Yes, sir. <laughs> Gentlemen, you. <Bill. laughs> How are you? It's good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's birthday. How old are you? I'm uh, 58. Wow. You guys want to sing or no? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta go get the rookies. <laughs> Any rookie reporters? No. Can you just talk about Fab and Chris going to D uh, League and what you hope they can learn there? <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's great for both of them. Um, you know, we actually thought about for a little bit keeping Chris up. Uh, but we have no practices coming up, so uh, that's what we needed him for right now. And uh, Fab, he just needs to play and learn, and uh, I think Mike will do a great job with him. So uh, it's a good experience for both of them. Does it take big guys to learn longer anyway? Well, it depends on the big guy, you know. Uh, it's not taking Anthony Davis a long time, you know. So it just depends on each individual player, you know, who they are. Fab hasn't played basketball a long time, so, you know, it's just going to take him – some time. I think he'll be really good in the D League because there's not a lot of big, so I'm expecting him to uh, almost be dominant. He, I don't think he'll see anybody his size, a very few guys. Steensman is in Minnesota, so <laughs> I mean, he's the, you know, and Steensman was dominant. Bigs are usually dominant now. How much does it help being the only uh, team that has players uh, in Because before, I guess, the Bobcats, whatever, the Sixers are there. Oh, that's huge. You know, we have control, too, over the uh, how it's run. You know, Mike came down and Spent the entire uh, preseason uh, training camp with us. Uh, so, I mean, they're running a lot of the stuff we do. They're running our defensive schemes. So I think it's it's terrific. Uh, we hope someday that every team has that. I think it would be great for the league. Uh, also, the new rule where you can, you know, a veteran can go down now. You know, if a veteran gets hurt and he can uh, go and play a couple games and come back, you know, that's – so there's a lot of good things happening uh, with the D-League. And I just hope it continues. Can you imagine if they do that? That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I'd miss the game to go watch him play. <laughs> Doc, last year you took uh, Al out to dinner. Did you guys uh, meet up again this time? Or? No, screw Al. We have time for him. He's too good now. You know, uh, I didn't. It was just a tough trip. So. Does he seem any different as a player as you watch he's just, him? Yeah, he's, he just keeps getting better and better. You know, he's, uh, the thing I thought I'd never say about Al, he's becoming a better passer. And, uh, and I'm very happy about that for him. You know, he just keeps working on his game. I think, you know, he hit that one little stretch where, you know, he had lost a lot, and um, you can see he's fought through that now. I think making that playoff run, and he was a big part of it last year, has kind of restoked him, and uh, it's good. Uh, he's, he's a heck of a guy. Knowing him as he did, as, knowing him as a good young player, he has really taken the young other guys under his wing and was developing him, even though they may take his – spot one day. I'm yeah. assuming this surprises you a little? No. Uh, you know, I just think yeah, what probably surprises Al was how quickly you become a veteran. And now you have to give direction. You know, uh, it just happens quick. The league is quick. It moves quick. Um, and uh, it's just, just really interesting. You know, him and Favors are working together a lot. And you can see him giving Favors probably the same uh, instructions that uh, veterans were trying to give him. Uh, and so it's just the way the league, it's just a circle, and it's good for them. Uh, how about their length? I mean, they, they start big guys at the five and four and off the bench they got. Them. Yeah, and they go big at the three at times. You know, they haven't done it much, but they, they will do it. Well, they'll put Millsap, Millsap at the three, so they're a big team. Uh, but, you know, you can't get lost in their size. They're six in the league at fast break points, so they're a sneaky run team. You, you, you start looking at the bigs, and next thing you know, they're down the floor scoring. Uh, Haywood, I mean, that's, you know, He's a kid that no one talks about. The kid's terrific, and uh, especially in the open court. You know, he's uh, they're they're a good basketball team. Because of their size, Doc, do they almost force you to think more about going with a conventional five-man group? Well, we really have all year. You know, when you think about it, we've gone small for a short time, but Kevin's a five to us. You know, so I don't. You know, to me, that's. Uh, he's a five, and Chris Wilcox is a five. So, um, to me, we are conventional most of the time. Doc, the, um, the Kevin's run that you seems to be back a bit this season. Yeah. And Ronda plays you for bringing it back. What kind of resurrected that? Well, JT, you know, and the way he moves and, uh, you know, more him being at the five starting the year gives you more time. Uh, we, we, we can put a lot of shooting on the floor. When you throw Jeff Green on the floor with, with JT and Paul, and, you know, uh, the biggest part of it to me is that Rondo guards are starting to go over 
now because he can shoot the ball. And now that that's happening, uh, that big has to show. Big's going to show him Ronda. We're getting something for Kevin. Uh, we're rolling Kevin now more than popping him. Uh, and that's the same reason because uh, Ronald keeps making that shot. And the more he makes the shot, the more things we can run. The last couple of seasons, was Kevin's physical say maybe part of it too? Like yeah, really yeah, well, I didn't want to throw it a lot to him, um, you know, a lot now, and he feels good. But uh, we can run it for other guys too. And also for the defensive inconsistencies that have been here and there this season, when Avery comes back, can he help really tackle that a little bit? Well, he can, he can help tackle the ball pressure thing, but no, he can't help the, the team defense. Uh, and we're getting better at it, you know. You know, I was jokingly saying before the Chicago game, we're at the point now we know the mistake we're making. Uh, you know, and that's a, that's a step. It sounds crazy, but it is a favorable step. You know, I see it. I saw I, we were laughing on film today. You can see we made a couple of the same mistakes, and now the guy is reacting when he makes a mistake. Like, a, like at least now, there's a reaction. So the next thing, they'll do it. Uh, but it's getting better. I mean, both sides are getting better. Uh, you know, and the other part with Rondo, I think that Rondo is – still trying to figure out the team offensively. He knows the playbook. He just said no the individual. Uh, so in a lot of ways, Rondo's working with half the playbook. Uh, and so the fact that we're still scoring and he he's not comfortable yet with each guy is a good sign for us. Doc, uh, where's Courtney Lee at in terms of offensive? Just getting comfortable. He's probably, it's the toughest one for him because we're not going to run a lot of stuff for Courtney. Um, and Courtney's going to get his stuff through other people. Uh, you know, we're starting to make the extra passes now, so Courtney will get more involved. The hockey pass is back for us, which is good. So um, he'll get his. Are you going to go see me play at all? Yeah, most likely I will. Yeah. You know, uh, he's injured right now. so uh, But if he can get healthy and get on the team and play, yeah, I'll be driving to me. Doc, you mentioned um, the possibility of using the D-League as kind of injury rehabilitation. With uh, the amount of time you guys are on the road in December, would that be a possibility for Avery? I don't know. Uh, we're not sure yet. You know, uh, I gotta get Mike's input on how the D League is. You know, it's a physical, crazy league. I don't want Avery down there either. So, uh, but we'll see. You know, um, that's a tough one for us because he needs to get back to learning the stuff we're doing. Uh, but he also needs. It'd be great to, to see him play a couple games before we throw him out on the floor. Doc, you talked a little about Jeff getting reacclimated to the NBA mm -hmm. game, just having the off year. Has it been offensively or defensively? It's been probably a little challenge. bit of both. Probably focus. Uh, he's, he's probably exhausted half the time. You know, I don't think people, uh, including me, gave enough thought to how much he had to do to get back to being on the floor. You know, his, his summers were harder than anybody else's summer. Uh, I mean, he he had to work all summer long uh, to get back to being a basketball player, and then the training camp comes, and so. You know, you can make a case he hasn't stopped working for a long time. And my guess would be that uh, I'm sure there's some fatigue with him, mentally and physically. And so we have to get through that. Just in terms of learning the system and all that as well, though? Like no, he's pretty things. good there. Yeah, because I think sticking around last year, you know, probably really helped him. Uh, and he's comfortable. Uh, you know, again, he's aggressive when we call his number. And we got to get him aggressive when his number's not called. Thank you, Thanks, guys. What's Jeremiah?